had to rely on the kindness and generosity of Liverpool people and charities like Kind and Radio City's Cash to Ki for Kids to deliver Christmas to far too many children because of the sheer desperation of parents who could not to afford to provide for their own children because of benefit sanctions and joblessness. One house in my ward had drawn a Christmas tree on the wall and to make it exciting for the children, decorated it by designing their own baubles and colouring it, it in. My Lord Mayor, this is a true story and it's one that will live with me forever and it's one that we all must wait to stop from happening again. And my Lord Mayor, I will tell you exactly why this is happening. This is because 2010 was the year of austerity. It's the year that's seen this city receive a 58% government cut in its overall budget. And it's the year that the people in my ward began to fight for survival. As a councillor, it's easy to get bogged down by a ward that's defined through its statistics. But working in partnership with the many local community organisations and officers at Liverpool City Council, believe it or not, I find it very easy not to. I find it easy not to, because for every day that I work my ward, I come away feeling humbled. I feel humbled by the sheer hard work and determination of community organisations that work with Liverpool City Council's policy teams to find solutions. Solutions that will combat the onset of poverty that this government is so set on solidifying and solutions that will pave the way for future generations to break the Tory cycle of employability deficits and joblessness. This initiative will see this Labour Council tackle problems at their root and it will build partnerships between Liverpool and Work and children's centres to support families and reduce child poverty. It will see us work with the Troubled Families Programme to provide support for whole households to achieve better outcomes. And it will develop the Council's in-house adult learning service to deliver appropriate training for people out of work, giving them the skills they need for jobs. £4.3 million of this fund will be awarded to Alt Valley's Neighbourhood Services Company in Croxteth. This will allow them to get the people in my community and this city work ready. It will give people back a sense of purpose, a sense of pride and a sense of control over the development of their own future. And this programme also gives us the opportunity to build better relationships with employers to negotiate contracts that offer more than zero hours. Negotiate contracts that offer holiday and sickness protection and build a workforce that is happy to work for the employers that we partner with. So, my Lord Mayor, I ask you to support this motion in, in its entirety, a motion that will deliver a programme of where, of, a program where £12.8 million pounds to the people of this city, a motion that will develop and deliver jobs, that will tackle poverty at its root and bring to an end to the vicious cycle of debt, hunger and oppression that takes hold as a direct result of unemployment and this Tory government. Thank you, my Lord Mayor. Can I advise the council that we've had notice of an amendment by Councillor Crowe? Are you moving your amendment now, please? Councillor Lawrence Brown will move it. Uh, yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Can, be, is it seconded? <laughs> thank you. Uh, can, I, can I first of all commend uh, Councillor Cushion on a very strong and um, very uh, inspiring speech, actually. Um, I, um, <coughs> I was uh, very um, pleased to hear. Um, and can I also point out that um, this amendment only refers actually to the, the final paragraph of the, uh, the motion, that uh, most of the motion would remain intact and is perfectly worthy. Um, <coughs> Lord Mayor, I have to say, um, in, in moving this amendment, that, uh, I was pleased to see that in the Guardian newspaper of the 18th of February, um, report that the Mayor had stated that with the UK on track to miss its renewable energy targets for 2020, 
uh, action on climate change at the local level is vital. Um, this is a welcome statement which contributes to the ambition of meeting the target outcome of the Paris climate talks to restrict the global temperature increase to no more than 1.5 degrees Celsius. To do this, however, will require difficult choices and a shift in the priorities that have been in place for many years, both at the national and local levels, and some of these re relate to employment. The purpose of this amendment is to direct the Cabinet to encourage inward investment into the creation of jobs in a low carbon economy. Jobs which will have less of a negative impact on climate change than those in other sectors. Of course, jobs are important per se. People should be provided with the opportunity to engage in sustainable, rewarding work which contributes to the benefits of themselves and society in general. But it's also important that we seek to move away from those industries which create substantial amounts of greenhouse gases and which threaten our ability to meet our obligations to tackle climate change. The low carbon sector economy is being promoted at the Liverpool City region level and its strengthening should therefore be a key aspiration of the City Council. I move this amendment. Councillor Small, do you want to speak on the amendment or the main motion? Councillor Radford on the amendment? Um, briefly, I'm, I'm puzzled what it actually the impact of the amendment would be. Would it mean if we had a training job for a driver, we don't, because that's not a low carbon job? If we had jobs in the airport, should we not fund it because it's not a low carbon job? So what jobs wouldn't we do to support people getting into by the effect of this amendment? And if we're not sure, I'm not going to take that risk on my, my constituents being stopped by barriers in the way of getting work. Well, if it can be helpful on the amendment, and um, obviously we'll defer to Councillor Kushner. Um, I think this is you know, an amendment in, in search of a motion in, in some ways. We would have accepted this, and I think we can accept it as an addendum, but not to delete the final paragraph. Because actually a lot of what you're asking for in terms of low carbon, we're going to deliver anyway under this programme. Councillor Kushner, is that acceptable to you? Um, no, I'd, well, there's, there's some, on, like what Councillor Small said, he's absolutely right, but the reason why I don't want to remove the last paragraph is because over, uh, well, there's £3.6 million pounds of that money has been awarded to MYA from, from Europe, uh, 4.3 to Old Valley from Europe, 750,000 to Hope University from Europe. So I just believe that it's very, very important that the last paragraph states. I think, I think the point being made is that this would be an addendum as opposed to deleting that last part. So it will be in as well as. Is that right? On that basis, can we, can we agree with it? Okay. That agreed, everyone? I don't want to disagree for the sake of it, but I just wonder if we're going to actually, what the impact would be if we have carbon using jobs that are going to be benefited like driving. And I, I just wonder if what the impact that is. Can't help it if the council rather doesn't understand low carbon. <laughs> we'll take the vote on the amendment. The addendum. The amendment. <laughs> if executive clarify the situation, but I'm puzzled as well. Please, Lola, Lola, let me try and make it clear. The amendment plus the addendum. So the addendum is incorporated into the amendment. That's how we do things. So the vote is on the amendment with the addendum. Sorry, there's no... Lord, make an, Lord, make an essay clarification because are we now saying that the addendum includes the final paragraph, which is very important yes. to us? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. We just need... Thank you. That's the point I was trying to make, Lord Mayor. So, so can we be clear that we, we have to vote on amendments. The amendment's been given. There's an agreement that the addendum then will incorporate that to absorb uh, effectively a, a composite motion. 
but we've got to then, because of Councillor Radford's position, take a vote on the amendment, <laughs> which is the amendment plus the addendum, which should, uh, subject to Councillor Radford, be to the satisfaction of everybody else. But we've got to vote accordingly. So, so we're voting on the amendment, which includes the addendum that will be incorporated into the main motion. Is that agreed? All those in favour? All those against? Are there any abstentions? <laughs> For the amendment, which includes the amendment, is 70 against 2, no abstentions. So the amendment plus the amendment is agreed. The main motion. <laughs> All those in favour? Is that unanimous? Yeah. <laughs> Motion 40. Uh, the success of Liverpool as an international destination by councillors Malcolm Kennedy, Abdul Qadir, and Gary Miller. Can I invite Councillor Kennedy to move the motion standing in his name? The motion is carried, I think there was uh, two abstentions, I think, okay? Can we 
motion uh, combating loneliness by Councillor Janet Puddock. As you all know, I made my maiden speech to council last year. I liked it so much that I've decided to do it again. <laughs> like last time, I want to speak about a subject that I'm passionate about. The situations I see every day, that is, that is the care of our older people, in particular, track and loneliness. The recent launch of the LGA Combat and Loneliness <coughs> campaign expose the effect loneliness has on our, on our older people. Statistics show that loneliness increases the risk of developing dementia by 64% and doubles the risk of developing Al Alzheimer's disease or a disability. It can cause high blood pressure and depression with a higher rate of mortality which is more damaging than smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Loneliness is, so, is also much worse in poorer urban areas, in people who live alone and in rented accommodation. Studies show that lonely people make more use of health and social care services, with estimates that over 1 million people over 65 are often or always lonely. It increases the pressure on council and the health services through referrals to adult social care services, GP and hospital visits, and early entry into residential or nursing care. The advantage age. The average age in this country is increasing, with more of us living longer. Loneliness is not just a problem our older people experience. It's an issue that we could all face. The LGA reports highlights great schemes taking place in age-friendly accredited cities such as Manchester, Bristol and Belfast. Here in Liverpool we are combating loneliness through the cabaret afternoons and holidays to stop social isolation. Shopping trips so people have independence. Buddy schemes for those who have lost their confidence training and craft opportunities and bridging the digital divide. We are a city of partnerships and we have been working with the community groups, older people forum, social landlords, local charities and local businesses to help support activities for our older people. Together we are hosting an older people's conference next week to listen to the views of our older people. Yes, all 300 of them by raising the issues they face and how we are tackling them. We estimate that the cabaret afternoons in one ward can save 4,500 hours in care support over the year. That's £35,000 at living wage level. But we don't do it to cut costs. We can see the benefits of inclusive communities, which is why the Mayor's pledge to gain World Health Organisation age friendly city accreditation. But the devastating £329 million government cuts since 211 and the £8 million cuts to public health announced in 215 are having a massive impact on how the council can continue to deliver even the essential adult social services. Yet in areas like Liverpool, where older people are more likely to need those essential services. Not only are they the hardest hit areas by the Tory government cuts, but also won't receive one penny of the 300 million relief funds intended to soften the impact <coughs> of council cuts as announced by Greg Clark, MP Community Secretary. 83%, yes, 83%, or 249 million pounds if that money is going to the struggle and poverty-stricken Tory-run councils of Surrey, Hampshire and Hertfordshire, even Oxfordshire County Council, which covers David Cameron's Whitney constituency, will receive an extra £9 million, while Liverpool will receive none. I personally invite Greg Clark MP to visit us here in Liverpool 
and attend one of our activities to see how we are tackling loneliness and the benefits it has on the well-being of our older people. I also call on the Council to lobby the Department for Communities and Local Government to fairly distribute the £300 million relief fund to cities like Liverpool, which are not only struggling, but have had to cut services to the bone. Thank you. Councillor Thomas. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I welcome this motion and, and thanks Councillor Woodhouse for bringing it to Council and for your excellent work that you're doing to combat loneliness. It's a very serious issue. Human beings are social. We're social beings. It's a basic human need to communicate and to have social contact with others. Even animals greet each other. And humans get great satisfaction from relationships with animals. But human communication is vital for our mental, emotional and physical well-being. Research has shown that being socially mar marginalised causes physical as well as emotional pain. <clears throat> so it should be of no surprise that the campaign to end loneliness tells us about the risks to mental and physical health that Councillor Woodhouse has just explained. <clears throat> so, so damaging is being socially excluded that in civilised countries solitary confinement is recognised as torture and is no longer allowed. The United Nations Committee Against Torture has condemned the USA for allowing it. <clears throat> As people age, we're more likely to inquire, acquire a mobility or a sensory impairment. In fact, two-thirds of disabled people are aged 60 and over. Um, and, and we are often marginalised and kept away from social contacts. We may be confined to one room in our homes and unable to get down the front doorsteps, which is why Liverpool City Council's policy and practice of only building lifetime homes is so vital. Events that are held in inaccessible buildings and even separate entrances to venues fracture social connections when one group goes off in one direction and those with mobility impairments are forced to go into another. Lord Mayor, these issues extend into many areas and we should all be alert to how many cruel ways in which people are marginalised, shunned and excluded. We must do all in our power to never knowingly allow this to continue. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I mean, Gary Miller isn't the only one who can write a long speech. I've got a great speech here, but uh, in, you know, because a few people of the red quarter of the city have asked me not to give a long speech, I'm not going to give it. All I wanted to say tonight was to acknowledge, really, the work done by Councillor Woodhouse in his role as the Mayor of Lee for all the people. She had to bring real energy to that role, and it's a, it's a really important role for the city. And just to make another point, that. You know, loneliness isn't confined to people in deprived areas. I represent probably one of the most prosperous wards in the city. And yet we have an issue in Chilwell of isolated older people in their own homes, homes they probably can't afford to eat, but we're trying to do what we can to alleviate that loneliness and that isolation. So it's not only in the more deprived areas of the city that this is an issue. And I think it's a really important issue. I know it's been a busy night, it's been a lot of people on the street, we've still got motions to speak, but please, as councillors, support this motion and try and support it in your everyday work as councillors. <laughs> Councillor Connor. Lord Mayor, I too would like to thank Councillor Woodhouse for all the work that he does in moving this motion. Um, in the world I represent, Alison and Hunts Cross, I know many residents have benefited from the work you do. Active, thank you. I would also like to praise the Combating Loneliness campaign by the LGA to highlight loneliness as a major public health concern which is damaging both mentally and physically to older people. However, it is important to also recognise we need to do more. Combating loneliness is a priority in my ward. Alison and Hunt Cross has the second highest proportion of older people in the city with 1,578 older people households, which makes up 25% of the households in my ward. In addition, nearly 15% of these households consist of single pensioners living alone. Lord Mayor, I support this motion. There is a lot of good work happening in my ward and across the city, 
but for the council to provide the necessary services to actually combat loneliness. It is right to call on the government to recognise loneliness and for Liverpool, a city devastated by council cuts, to receive a fair share of the 300 million relief funds. Thank you. I've got no other speakers unless Councillor Woodhouse would like to respond. So we'll go straight to the vote. All those in favour? Is that unanimous? Motion 16, Adult Social Care Funding by Councillors Ros Gladden and Barry Cushman. Can I call on Councillor Gladden to move the motion standing in her name? Okay, um, I'm aware that we've got a very important football match on tonight and um, uh, Anderson is um, taking this opportunity to... Oh, that's very, very good. <laughs> You as councillors know 
I advise the council that the bad notice of an amendment by Councillor Crow. Would you like to move that? Can I move that in terms of... Is it seconded? Yeah. Okay, um, I've moved this as an addendum, not an amendment, so it's a straight tag on. Okay, I've put this forward because although we do need to ask the government for more money for public health, and it's quite clear we need to ask the government for more money for everything, providing more just for the local authority for its public health obligations is just one element of what's really needed. We have to look at joined up working with the NHS to complete that picture. The NHS bill, co-signed by both of our party leaders, Caroline Lucas and Jeremy Corbyn, would reverse some of the damage that's been done to healthcare services in the UK since the revisions of 2012. Early that year, I brought a motion here to the council, urging the council to get all local MPs to vote against the Health and Social Care Act. Everyone in the chamber, bar one, on that day, voted in favour of that motion. So what's changed? Have we decided it's actually better to go along with the damaging privatisation and reduce services that have resulted since the Act? I can't believe that's true. We may have found very creative ways of working and indeed made genuine efficiency savings, but without fundamental financial support from central government, we know that even more changes and reductions in services will be coming, but we're at a point where they're unlikely to be for the better. The Better Care Fund, mentioned in the motion, is a temporary pot of money. We know it's to ease, uh, uh, support the transition to a different form of social care. But it's not new funding. It's actually pulled from council money and NHS money. Now, we know we're losing funds. NHS are losing funds. So what happens when that kind of pooling and redirection of money simply runs out? We can't assume it's going to come. We can't keep transferring the same set of money to different sources. It's interesting that the government claims that at a cost of £100 billion, the NHS is publicly unaffordable. And yet the auditors of KPNG can see the potential for a £200 billion private industry in it. So how do they see this happening? How will that money be made? And it's through us. It's through the us, we people who need the services, through insurance policies, payments to private companies. So instead of costing £100 billion through collective taxation for a universal service, we could be, end up paying double that sum through private insurance with no discernible improvement to the services. And the bulk of that money will go to the management and administration costs of the broken up, broken up provision and, crucially, to shareholders. Does any one of us here believe that that's better for our health services? When I took this plea to the Health and Social Care Committee, the arguments against it were that it would cost too much to implement the bill, that staff were sick of change and upheaval, and that some things were working well locally. But more change is inevitably coming as funding is cut further from both ourselves and from the NHS. The bill allows for local dif differences. We can keep what works well, it's that flexible. And the amount it would cost to reform pales into insignificant compared to what will be siphoned off away from the services and into shareholders' bank accounts. Asking the government doesn't seem to be particularly effective for extra funding at the moment. But helping a good bill become a really beneficial act would achieve what we can't do, just rely on the Tories being in a good mood. We might be happy, proud even, of some of the things that the city's been able to achieve in the circumstances, but we shouldn't be blind to the direction of travel and should be actively saying that there is a better way. The NHS bill is a better way. Please vote for this amendment. Please, 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 please vote for this amendment so that our MPs can support the bill on March the 11th when it goes for its second reading. And real funding can be restored to the NHS and real responsibility given to those who need it. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Mr. Speakers, to the amendment. You, you'll have the right of reply at the end. I've got uh, Councillor Glare. Would you like to speak on the amendment or the debate? Well, well, you're next on the list. <laughs> this is my swan song, so I'll speak wherever I'm given the moment. Um, <laughs> if it's against the amendment, really, so be it. Um, basically, um, I don't really understand what you're talking about, so just bear with me. Um, <laughs> my ass is so sorry. Um, I just wanted to take the opportunity really to, to say that we've done some fantastic things um, in adult social care over the last um, eight years or more, um, you know, and that I've been aware of. I'm so proud that we were the first core city to sign uh, to be part of the, the Time to Change Mental Health Challenge that we, we were there right at the start. Um, it's been a joy to, to do it for the last three years 
and uh, just put a challenge out there that I'm sure that the mayor will rise to, that there will be a mayoral leave for mental health, and just announcing it here. She says, <laughs> he's gone, so he can't, he can't sue me. Um, um, I, you know, I, I am the chair of governors of um, a small primary school in Netherly, and um, my head is, um, is, 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 is committed to doing the workforce wellbeing charter. How cool is that? How, how far have we moved on in the last eight years uh, as a city, as a nation, in terms of dealing with uh, stigma and dealing with mental health awareness? When, you know, World Mental Health Day and um, run by the Mental Health Consortium is getting bigger and better every year. They are a service user-led organisation and they do an amazing job uh, with the council, um, with uh, the CCG, with Mersey Care, with third sector agencies. And co-production is happening right across the city with the services. You know, Gram and Granby has, has been developed, and, and it's not Crown Street has been developed with service users and carers. And why the flipping heck shouldn't it be? It has to be. Um, you know, we've had increased opportunity to train in suicide awareness um, and mental health and um, first aid through our amazing uh, public health promotions. That is severely under threat at the moment. Uh, there are benefit services, I want to praise our benefit maximisation team who pull in money for our most vulnerable time and time again um, and they just respond, Martin Youngnitz responds like that, come on. Um, and uh, uh, So, but there are some challenges um, and we as a council, we need to hold them to account. You know, we need to hold the CCG, we need to hold Mother Care, we need to hold third sector agencies. Where they are not doing their job, we have got to say, come on. Do a better job. You know, we know you're struggling, but you can do more. You can do better for the people of the city. Um, uh, and our arts and culture and sports organisations are also working really, really well with our um, service users and carers. They are doing amazing work. And um, I want to challenge you all, and I'll, I'll do it even though I'm not a councillor anymore. And um, that, 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 not all, we've been about eight or nine weeks, eh? Gosh, that frightened me. Gosh, eight or nine weeks. All right, okay. And, um, you know, to find the people who don't email us, who don't phone us, who don't come to our residence groups. You know, they're the people lying in bed all day with curtains drawn. And we have got to find them. We've got to find more innovative ways to find the most vulnerable. Are you being cheeky? Stop it. Um, and then I just want to finish with, I'm wearing little heart earrings here and a little heart, heart ring. And I just want to say, you know, what we do, what you guys do, um, is you love people and it is tough love and uh, all you need is love uh, but keep going and um, it is really tough, it's really hard, it's going to get worse but the people of our city they really really need us to fight for them and to, um, to, to, to find them out and to say come on you can do it, you can recover, it is possible and so um, yeah that's it, thanks so much. Councillor Bowman's on the amendment. Just, I uh, want to say first of all thanks to Ross Blasen for the huge amount of work she's done. I know other people are <laughs> and, and secondly, a uh, fantastic speech, Claire, and um, you, you will be deeply missed in this chamber yeah. for your enthusiasm and your positivity. <laughs> Um, I did stand to speak on the amendment, and I think this amendment is just, it's just about opposition. <coughs> I was only in opposition as a bystander, I wasn't an elected member in opposition. And when you're in opposition, I don't know if I should do that, I'm, Joe's not here, but the thing is, effective opposition is about being strategic, and it's about strategic interventions. It's not about...